Magnus' conversation with the Moon Lord cultists didn't go as planned. The cultists attacked him, and in self-defense, Magnus had to handle the situation. Fortunately for Magnus, the death of the cultists was a suitable sacrifice to initiate the Moon Lord summoning ritual. This caused magical pillars to appear all across the land, with powerful monsters defending them. The path forward for Magnus was clear. Kill the monsters, destroy the pillars, and defeat anything else that gets between him and the Moon Lord. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Magnus the Mage episode. We are doing a Calamity Death Mode playthrough using only magic weapons. Last episode, we defeated a bunch of bosses. We defeated the Plaguebringer Goliath, the Martian Madness event, the Cultists, and the Ravenger. Now we have three more pillars to defeat and lots more bosses. So let's get a little bit more prepared because I think the boss fights coming up are gonna be pretty tricky. And the first thing I want to craft is the amazing Heart of the Elements. So this took a little bit of farming in between episodes, although not as much as I was expecting because the hardest thing to get by far is the rare elemental in a bottle. And we actually got that really randomly a couple episodes ago. And then we already had the Rose Stone. We were able to farm those up in between episodes. We already had the Arrow Stone. And then the Eye of the Storm's pretty simple as well. You just go up to the sky, activate a Zerg potion, kill a couple sky elementals, and you get that really quickly. And everything else we already had. This was from the Plaguebringer Goliath, and we got that on our first clear. So we are good to craft the Heart of the Elements. I remember on Anna the Archer, we had to farm so much to get this. Let's take a look at what it does. It increases max life by 20, life regen by one, all damage by 8%. It increases movement speed by 10% and jump speed by 100%. And the stats will increase if the elementals are turned off. Next, let's craft this alchemical flask. And what that requires is bottled water, bezoar, and plague cell canisters. Now that we've got that, we can craft the plague hive on the ancient manipulator. The absorber is a combination of the grand gelatin, the seashell, fungal carapace, giant shell, giant tortoise shell, the amadeus spark, depth cells, luminal, and tenebris. And we actually had every single one of them except for the seashell, which is pretty simple. All you need to do is go to the ocean, pop a zerg potion, and just wait for the little sea slugs to come up, and then you can get your seashell pretty quickly. Let's craft the amazing absorber. There we go. It increases movement speed and jump speed, which I love. It does plus 20 max life and mana. Standing still boosts life regen and mana regen. 5% increased damage reduction. And this is the most important part at the end. Enemy attacks will have part of their damage absorbed and used to heal you. Incredible. And it's been resprited since the last time we played with Anna the Archer. And the last item that I wanted to craft is this rainbow gun improvement called the Cosmic Rainbow. And it just requires pearl wood, which I don't think we've got, but I think one of the NPCs in here will sell that. There's like an NPC that sells blocks. So let's see where he is, the builder NPC. There we go. We'll buy some pearl wood. And there we go, we can craft the Cosmic Rainbow. And before we do that, I wanted to just show you Rainbow Gun. For those who haven't seen it, it's been around in the game for a really long time, but it's a pretty cool effect. So I'm curious what this will do and how it will change the Rainbow Gun. So let's go with the Cosmic Rainbow and let's see what this does. Interesting. So it's very similar, but it just adds a ton extra rainbows. Well, we've got so many good accessories now, it's hard to even pick which ones we should use. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I love this spell. It looks so awesome. I feel like I'm a lunatic cultist. And let's see what other spells we've got. We've got this nebula spell. Oh, we should throw down our Cosmic Rainbow. It's pretty good. Oh, and with the Heart of the Elements, I've got it set to be 
toggled off so we get higher bonuses and we don't see the summons because since we're doing just mage only I don't want to really have summon damage from our accessories man we are really tearing through these guys oh and we've already got the pillar ready to go Let's grab our loot magnet and pull in all of this stuff. The next bosses we've got, I'm actually pretty scared of. We have Astrum Dias and we have Duke Fisher on. Both of those bosses are pretty dang hard. So hopefully we are prepared for those guys. I don't really know how good this spell is. I just like the way it looks, so I'm using it. It seems to be doing pretty well, though. Let's try this one out. This was the one we got from Meld Blobs. I'm usually not a fan of this shape of attack, because it requires being pretty close to the enemies. But it seems to be a pretty good spell. Terror Ray, I think, is still my favorite, even though we've had it since Plantera, so it should be outgrown by now, but it's still just as good as ever. There we go. I want to try doing a quick test before we start boss fights. So we've got a stopwatch and let's put that in our piggy bank so we can see our speed. What I want to do is see how fast we can fly. So we can fly at 67 miles per hour and let's take off our boots and switch on the absorber and see how fast we can fly. So we can actually fly faster if we don't have boots on and if we're using the absorber. Now, the other thing I want to try is switching Grand Gelatin over top of the Sigil of Calamitous. And let's see how fast we can fly now. So we can fly at 87 miles per hour. So this is why I really like the jump speed. It's because it can really boost our uh, mobility and our flight speed. So we might actually just pull the boots off for this boss fight because I don't think we're going to be running much when we fight the Astrum Dias boss. And we've got Vortex Fragments now, so we can craft the Swarmer as well. Awesome. So this is a really powerful bee gun. Oh, one thing from last episode is we have the Lunatic Cultist lore piece, and what it does is it increases all stats during Lunar Event. It also decreases vision due to the knowledge draining our mind, as it says. So I think we could maybe combat that by putting on sunshine potions. It'll be good to have some extra bonus stats during this fight. I think that's an Atlas arm right there. Ooh, I'm actually getting a little nervous. <laughs> I don't wanna mess up on this boss. Okay, here we go. Astrum Dias. Oh my gosh. Okay, we need to turn off Zerg first. Oh my gosh. Maybe this weapon is not going to be good. Ooh. Already down to 50% health, but the boss is getting hurt really bad, too. No! Oh my gosh, that was so close. <laughs> let's give this another shot. And let's turn off Zerg and get this fight going. Okay, so we're doing like 7,000 damage with our Terror Ray. Yeah, this extra movement speed's serving us really well. Maybe let's head backwards. Oh, no, we're just taking <laughs> so much damage. Okay, let's try this.
Oh man, 12%. We're getting pretty close. Let's get our Xerox wings and see how they compare. And we can fly at 134. And how fast can we fall? 70. Okay, I think we have a winner, Xerox wings. Let's give this a try with Xerox wings. I'm gonna reroll them and I think we'll be able to beat the boss. Ooh, we got menacing on our first try. Perfect. So we're gonna lose 10% damage, but I think that's going to be a fine trade-off for that extra movement speed, because I think we'll be able to stay alive a lot better. Okay, here is the last atlas, and here we go. Let's get away. Okay, we'll pop a heal, and I think we're doing pretty well. Oh no, what did we do? What did we do? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what the heck happened there? We went into a planetoid. <laughs> Why? Okay, we need to switch back to Terra Ray. Oh my gosh, we won it. <laughs> Even though we went into a planetoid and had to mine our way out. Oh my gosh, these wings launched me into a planetoid. Oh man, that boss fight is so hectic. Oh, we still have Zergon. Let's get rid of that. Whew, let's go back to base. That was a lot of excitement. We have the Astral Infection lore, and now we have the Astrum Dias lore. It says place in your inventory to gain increased movement speed in space. Excellent. We got Stardust, Harvester Parts, a Star Sputter. That's fun. And then we have the Astral Bulwark and an Astrum Diaz Mask. Now that we've defeated Astrum Diaz, I think we can actually harvest this material right here. Yes, we can get Astral Ore. So cool. And this will craft a new armor set that will help us out on the Moon Lord quite a bit. Excellent, so we've mined up all of the Astral Ore. We can craft a bunch of Astral Bars, it's just Stardust and Astral Ore. So let's craft a whole bunch of those. Oh my goodness. We can really craft a lot of these. We can get an Astral Staff. That looks pretty awesome. Oh, interesting, it's like a Meteor Staff. Let's craft some Astral Armor. Wow. Our defense went from 99 to 119. And our attack is 230. And it went up to 233. And the Astral Armor says set bonus is 25% increased movement speed, 28% increased damage, and 21% increased critical strike chance. It says whenever you crit an enemy, Fallen, Hallowed, and astral stars will rain down. This effect has a one second cooldown before it's triggered again. I wanna try fighting Astrum Dias once more now that we have some upgrades, and I wanna see how it goes. So we've got everything ready to go. And let's get this started. Seems like it switches between which enemy can get hit and which one is immune.
Wow, we're doing much better now. Man, these upgrades are huge. We're not even using upgraded weapons or anything. Oops, we ran right into that one. There we go. Another Astrum DS clear. That feels good. I wanted to make sure we got our revenge because I didn't like that he beat us twice. So what I want to do now is head on over to the ocean biome and let's try to fight Duke Fishron. So before we get this fight started, I'm just going to put down a little arena here because I don't want to use boots. I think it's better to use these other accessories. Let's start this up and I think I'm just going to use the terror ray. Ooh, already starting off rough. I struggle with Duke Fish Run. He's such an aggressive boss. Okay, now we're to the hard phase. Just need to focus. Ah, wrong way. Oh no. Ah, making mistakes. Okay, I think I'm just going to use the Swarmer and see if I can get some more hits using this weapon. Oh no! There we go. Oh man, that was close. I need to practice Duke Fisher on more. Whew! That's why I kind of waited for Duke Fishron until we are way overpowered using Swarmer against Duke Fishron. We really should have put on our Plague Hive. That would have made it much better. And let's see what we got. Ooh, we got the Razorblade Typhoon. Excellent. Such a good spell. I kind of want to try fighting him again, but I want to use the full power of our Swarmer. So let's see how it does. Oh, and there's the lore. I don't want to miss that. Oh my gosh, this is doing so good. And let's wait for our mana to re regen. There we go. Much easier with using this weapon and the Plague Hive the whole way. And let's see what we got this time. We got a summon, we got a Fishron mask. Very nice. The Duke Fishron lore says place in your inventory to increase 
all damage, crit, and movement speed while submerged in liquid. It says, however, when you're not submerged, you get decreased damage, crit, and movement speed. That might be good to have doing the abyss exploration, but that's probably the only application for it. One cool thing is that the Razorblade Typhoon can actually upgrade into the Nuclear Fury really quickly. We just need Luminite and we've got everything else. So that's a fun thing to have. I think we may have already outclassed the Razorblade Typhoon by this point, but still, it's definitely something we're going to want to keep. I think that's a great place to finish off this episode. We've defeated Astrum Dias, we've defeated Duke Fishron, and we've even upgraded our armor. Lots of good stuff. We are pretty much ready to go to fight Moon Lord next episode, so definitely stay tuned. It's going to be a really epic fight. If you're enjoying these videos, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.